What's up guys? I never would have thought Elon Musk would ever talk about this profession. I have great respect for the actuarial profession. Uh, your guys are great at math. Uh, please join Tesla. On Wikipedia, this profession has been ranked first or second in online rankings, and chances are you've probably never heard of it. Have you ever heard the term actuary? Or better yet, met an actuary? If you haven't, I don't blame you. That probably means you're not a nerd. So what exactly is an actuary? An actuary uses math to quantify risk for insurance products. What really sets the actuarial profession apart is not only its uncanny ability to be mistaken for accounting, but also the sheer number and rigor of exams you'll be taking while working. Unless there's something wrong with you, you don't take these exams for fun. The reason you take them is because with most employers, you're guaranteed a salary increase when you pass. So if you want a high level of control over your own salary and career progression, this might be the profession for you. According to BLS, not to be confused with K-pop sensation BTS, Ashries are classified as a math science occupation along with other math occupations. Okay, so maybe you knew that, but did you know that out of these professions, actuary ranks the highest in terms of salary? And perhaps what's even more interesting is that this number is not reflective of an actuary's true earning potential. D.W. Simpson and Ezra Penland are two popular recruiting firms within the actuarial community, and they've been around for quite a while, so they have a lot of data points on actuarial salaries. You can see that they're broken down by years of experience and credentials or exams passed. Starting off with no experience and two exams passed, the middle 85% can expect between $64,000 and $81,000 a year. This chart is specifically for property and casualty actuaries, which is going to be slightly higher than the other lines of business, but it's not too far off. And you can see that just with a couple of years of experience and a few exams passed, you can easily break six figures. And as we work our way further right and further down, with about 10 years of experience, you're earning between 174 and 297. Let's call that around 250 a year. With 15 years of experience, it's around 300. And when you continue past that, you can see that the salary continues to increase with more experience. You might also notice that the ranges are pretty wide, especially with more experience. And that's going to be a result of other factors aside from purely exams and years of experience. Both these salary surveys get pretty detailed, so I'll put a link in the description below. DW Simpson also offers an interactive salary survey. So you can see that with just five years of experience, this matches the number that BLS showed. So obviously these are different data sources, but hopefully this paints a more holistic picture of how actuarial salaries work. So I know we talked a lot about salaries here, and that's sort of the point of this section. If your goal is to maximize your salary with as little effort as possible in the shortest amount of time, the actual profession is not for that. Once you start your exam process, it is a marathon to get through all of them. However, the actuarial profession does offer many other benefits. Let's take a look at them. So you might think that with insurance and numbers, it's not really a profession that allows for a lot of creativity and impact because numbers sort of just work themselves out, right? A computer can do this, AI can do this, 1 plus 1 equals 2, why do we need actuaries? We need actuaries because most of the time actuaries are predicting what's going to happen in the future. One way that I like to describe the difference between accountants and actuaries is that accountants focus on what has already happened and actuaries focus on what is going to happen. So if you think about how you would quantify regulation or ideas or words, you're going to have to apply wisdom, experience, and judgment to make informed decisions. It's not always as simple as just plugging numbers into a model and hoping that you'll get a right answer. When you become credentialed, you can also issue what's called a statement of actuarial opinion, as well as certify other types of insurance documents. So when you do that, you're assuming personal and professional responsibility for the assumptions that go into real world products. And that can be really rewarding because you see the direct impact of your work. If you made it this far, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing. Currently 0% of you are subscribed because this is my first video. As an actuary, you're going to have a lot of growth opportunity within the insurance industry. Especially if you're credentialed and experienced, you'll be in high demand and you shouldn't have trouble finding a job. And this is one of the major benefits of being credentialed. 
And if you're really ambitious and determined, the opportunity to become chief actuary or CFO or CEO of an insurance company is definitely there. Actuaries are well-respected and well-treated within the insurance industry. Now, obviously not everyone's going to get to that C-suite level position. At that point, you're going to need a wide array of skills and a bit of luck. But the opportunity and the presidents are there. There are certainly CEOs that are legacy actuaries. One of the reasons the actual profession is ranked so high is because of good work-life balance. So having worked as an actuary for over a decade, I think this is both true and false. And here's why. For the first few years as an actuary, you're going to be studying and working at the same time. On the plus side, companies are going to give you time off to study, so maybe 150 to 250 hours a year. Assuming you're able to take all this time off, and sometimes you're not because of work stuff that comes up. To pass these exams, you're still going to need to put in, say, 300 to 500 hours a year. And this is your own time. So in that regard, while the workload itself may not be that stressful, having to study for exams and work at the same time is something that you're going to have to learn to do as an actuary. Also, in regards to work-life balance, there's a difference between working at an insurance company and a consulting firm. Having worked at both myself, my experience is that on the consulting side, the hours do tend to be longer, and that's just driven by the nature of consulting firms and billable hours. On the insurance side, there aren't billable hours, and generally the deadlines aren't as strict. So when you read about good work-life balance for the profession, that's going to be more applicable for the insurance side. Based on what I found on the internet, on the consulting side, people tend to work 40 to 50 hours a week, and on the insurance side, people work 35 to 40 hours a week. However, when it's exam season, these numbers go up significantly. So overall, is the work-life balance good? Yes and no. Yes and no. I think for the pay that you get, the work-life balance is pretty good. There, there are professions that pay more, and there are careers that have better work-life balance. But when you combine these factors, you get a pretty good deal with the actual profession in that it has relatively low stress for relatively good compensation. So is this profession for you and does it deserve its high place in rankings? To be honest, I think these rankings take complex subjects and boil them down to sensationalized headlines. Despite the title of this video, I'm not here to convince you to be an actuary. Your career is something you're going to have to discover on your own, not because some random YouTube video with a clickbait title told you about the profession. But if after all this you have learned something and want to learn more, then feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and this. If you're interested in revolutionary insurance, please join Tesla. I, I would love to have some high energy actuaries, especially.